Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're going to be talking about how to properly do Asus ROG Ally game profiles as well as some custom TDP and fan curve options. This will be a quick video. I didn't find that a lot of people are using their custom game profiles, TDP, fan curves and all of that to their highest potential and I think maybe some of it's misunderstood. I don't think Asus has done a really good job of explaining it either. So I thought I would show you how to navigate around that software, create what you need and make it something that'll work for you. Honestly, maybe even I'm not using it correctly, but I found that my settings and profiles have worked out really well. So I wanna share that with the rest of you and, and maybe it makes your experience a little bit better. It's still up in the air and whether it's the heat that's killing SD cards on the ROG Ally or something else, but it doesn't hurt to not have your heat constantly throttling by hitting the 95 degree top. And so we'll look at that and I'll show you how I can get that a lot lower. Before we jump in, let me tell you about today's video sponsor, Ugreen. I've been buying Ugreen products for years now, uh, cables, chargers, you name it. They've always been a, a great name brand on Amazon in a sea of third parties. And so when they asked me to review the Ugreen Nexode 100 watt charger, I had already purchased it. It's been a great charger for the ROG Ally specifically. It's been an easy recommendation for the ROG Ally as well as other needs, especially the ROG Ally as it does 30 watt charging in the command center. So you can actually see 30 watt and you're fine. And given that it's 100 watt, as we found out with the ROG Ally Discord, you need more than 65 watts. So 100 watt is a perfect middle ground in giving you that extra overhead that you need for charging the ROG Ally. You can charge the ROG Ally in about an hour with this, or you can charge the M2 MacBook Air to 50% in 30 minutes. It's a pretty awesome charger. And you don't get to say that much about chargers. I was just on a trip with this and brought it with me, used it on the plane and every other scenario I can think of, it's pretty great because it actually does fold up and so it makes it a little bit more portable than other chargers. But what really came in handy was the fact that it has four different ports for charging. You can see here that it has USB-C, one, two, three, and then a USB-A port. So I was able to charge my Ally, tablet, my wife's phone, and a retro handheld without having to worry. One outlet, four different devices. And since it's using dynamic temperature sensors, I didn't have to worry about it overheating or any damage to components, it's got that covered. Couple that with the fact that it does power delivery and quick charge, you can see that it's doing super fast charging with my Samsung S23 Ultra, and that's pretty awesome as well. Check out the Ugreen Prime Day deals for up to 40% off, and I have a link in the description in case you're interested. Let's talk about game profiles first. If you didn't know, any EXE you add to Armory Crate is able to be customized further and you create what's called a game profile for it. This could be custom keybinds, dead zones, trigger settings, vibration, which TDP profile to use, and other basic information about it. I've created game profiles for almost every single game and emulator that I have. And I think this is how Asus intends us to use it because it allows me to stay in auto control mode while Armory Crate picks gamepad or desktop controls based on my game profiles. I haven't had to manually switch from auto control mode in at least a week and haven't had to touch the TDP profile or operating mode either. Select the game in Armory Crate and choose game profile at the bottom or X. Now this is where people usually get tripped up. The first thing you need to do here is select your template. And so for Persona 5 Royal, we're going to select gamepad mode. Now that we've done that, any custom keybinds we create will work when it's in auto control mode. If I set M1 or M2 to Alt F4, for example, and jump into Persona 5 Royal, the keybind works perfectly. So you wanna replicate this same process for all your games and emulators and add whatever keybinds you want. The mistake here is that most people don't select the template first. So you want to do that before adding any custom keybinds. Maybe I don't want Alt F4 binded to M1 or M2 for every game. Maybe I want it to map to the Xbox button or Steam button, for example. The other changes here that I normally do is heading to configuration and choosing the profiles I want to use for operating mode. You'll see here that for Persona 5 Royal, 
I'm using an 18 watt custom profile I made for when I'm plugged in. And a 15 watt profile for when I'm on battery. Armory Crate does this switch for me every time, so I don't need to manually change anything. After we create a few custom profiles, I'd highly suggest going in and creating game profiles with your gamepad template and operating mode settings changed. So now the big one, custom TDPs and fan curves. This is going to be a bit anticlimactic, as it really is super simple, just unfortunately a bit buggy. In Armory Crate, head to Settings, Operating Mode, and now we can see our normal profiles that were included by Asus as well as a manual option. Head to the manual option. I've obviously created a few profiles already, so let's create a new one. Click the three dots to the right of the check mark and select Create New. Now you're going to see three sliders here, SPL, SPPT, and FPPT. We're going to make this super simple. I'm connected to the Ugreen Nexo 100 watt charger right now, which as you saw earlier does proper 30 watt turbo. But if I connect to a third party dock that doesn't do full 30 watt, you can see I can only go up to 25 watt. And so for me, I'm going to create a 25 watt profile. It's as easy as sliding each slider to 25 watts. You'll have to play around with them as changing the sliders to the right usually makes the sliders on the left go down. So just fix it until they all say 25 watt. This is basically telling the ROG ally that, hey, we only want to use 25 watt here and nothing more, no boosts. Now we also need to set the fan curves and I see people overcomplicating this so much, but it's easy. Select preset number three for both fans. This means the fans are gonna be slightly louder than they were before, as Asus's default profiles were rarely using the fans until it started throttling, and that's not great. I would now click the three dots again and rename the profile to 25 watt, and you need to click the check mark box. When you do, you'll get a warning about how doing the wrong thing with these settings could blow up the world, but that's okay. We're smart and click okay. This profile will now activate and it's now available for your game profiles. A few things you should know at this point. First, the options for custom profiles change depending on if you're on battery or plugged in. I found that if your dock or charger only shows 25 watt, it assumes you're on battery. So unplug it and come back here and you can now create custom profiles for being plugged in. For me, I've created profiles for 7 watt, 10 watt, 15 watt, 18 watt, 25 watt, and 30 watt for both plugged and unplugged. And it's the exact same steps I showed with the same fan curve on all of them. To give you an idea of how that works in practice, my 30 watt profile maxes out at 75 degrees. So never hitting that 95 degree throttle that the built-in turbo does all the time. That's a massive difference. From a performance perspective, it's a negligible difference. Forza Horizon 5 still plays at a basically capped 60 FPS throughout. Another point to talk about is that if you open Command Center, there's an issue here. The operating mode tile will not show all of your profiles that you created. It will only show the current active one. That means if you have a game profile and you set the game to use your 18 watt profile, that's what will be used. However, if you were in Armory Crate and you selected 25 watt from the drop down and then the check mark, that one will now load. So that's the reason I recommend setting per game profiles to the custom modes that you want. Last point to mention on this. Armory Crate currently doesn't handle multiple programs open in a good way. Meaning, I use Playnight to launch games for example, but when I launch a game like Persona, there's been instances where the profile just wasn't changing from Playnight's profile to Persona's profile. It's an annoying bug and it doesn't happen that often, but when it does it's frustrating. I usually just close out a Playnight to fix this, 
That's going to be it for this one. I hope these tips and tricks were useful to you. Share in the comments below any tips and tricks you found or custom profiles that you're using. Mine are definitely not the be all end all, just what I found to be the easiest and just works. I don't want to have to play around with all of this nonsense, I just want to play games. And so that's where I'm going with all of this. If you like today's video and you want more ROG Ally content, I have an emulation setup video with EmuDeck, as well as a front end launcher video with Playnight. Both are great options and both will make your device feel a lot better. Check those out if you have the time. Please don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow and hope you all have a good one.